Many people are not aware of them, but every day we are surrounded by standards. From Wi-Fi and 4G to connect to the internet, to the central heater in your house, and the bank card you use for purchases. They all involve technology that has become the standard in their field. Researcher Paul Wiegmann of Rotterdam School of Management, Erasmus University, studied how standards come into existence. He explains that there are basically three different ways. But if a corporation wants their product to become the standard, they have to creatively combine them. So, how do standards then come into being? It actually turns out that there are three different ways of how standards can, be, uh, can emerge. Well, you could say three different modes of standardization. The first mode is the committee-based mode. In this mode, you have lots of different interested parties that just sit around a table and try to uh, jointly develop a solution to a problem. A very well-known example of a standard that emerged in a committee is the A series of paper sizes, so A4, A5 and so on. The second way in which standards can come into being is through a market battle. In this market-based standardization, you have different companies that all put their products onto the market and then basically compete against each other until one of them becomes the dominating one that supersedes all the other ones. And the classic example of that would be the VHS versus Betamax battle back in the 80s when home video was something new. And finally, you have government-based standardization, where the government basically just picks, picks a solution and uses its hierarchical position to impose that on actors in the market. Now, increasingly, we see that these three different modes of standardization become mixed. So if you look at trends, for example, like making things smart, so if you have smart cities, smart industries, if you look at big sustainability challenges, you see that actors from a lot of different industry sectors, a lot of different countries come together to set standards and they all bring their own experience in standardization into this process. And as a result, quite often you get two or even all three of these modes included in the same standardization process, which can lead to, to very dynamic developments uh, with lots of competition and lots of uh, interaction between different players. A good example of a process where all three modes of standardization were active in parallel is the process they took to standardize this charging plug for charging electric cars in Europe. In that case, a number of companies were active in the committees to agree on a common design, but at the same time, some of them were already putting their designs in the market and building up installed bases to strengthen their position in the discussions. When it turned out that the European industry could not agree on a common design, the European Commission stepped in and used its hierarchical position to choose this design as the common standard in Europe. A German medium-sized company used all of the three modes very strategically and as a result, they were successfully in getting their design accepted as the standard for charging electric cars all over Europe. There's an increasing number of cases where more than one mode of standardization plays a role in the emergence of a standard. For example, when different mobile telecommunication standards were competing on a global scale, there was an element clearly of market uh, battle in there, but also strong involvement by various governments that tried to promote their own national developments. If you want to look at a case that involves both committees and governments, then look no further than the ISO shipping container. And a good example of a case that involves both committees and markets is the development of a common file format for office documents on your computer. So, what does this mean for companies? If you want to influence the next standard that's being developed in your industry to, uh, to reflect your preferences, you really need to be aware of these three modes and how you can use them strategically. For example, if you engage in a committee, that can help to increase the legitimacy of a solution. If you bring new products into the market, that can really help you to build up an installed base. At the same time, you also have to be aware of what your competitors are doing. For example, if your competitors go into a committee and you don't join, then you might be left out of the discussion. If they put products into the market and you don't, then maybe you get a disadvantage there. Finally, you also have to be aware of the standardization culture in your industry. For example, if in your industry or also in your country, standardization committees are not used very often, it might be difficult to join discussion partners if you want to use committee-based standardization. If you use all of these options well and strategically, then you really can increase your chances of getting a standard that reflects your preferences. Mm -hmm.